In this video, we'll set up the components required to handle collisions with the map. We'll start by creating a new layer with an isometric Z as Y tile map. We will call this layer Collision. We want to set the tile map renderer mode to individual again, but we need to unlock our inspector before we can see the collision tile map. We also want this layer to render on top of everything else, so we set the order in layer to 2. This is the highest value that we've used so far. We're going to use the collision marker tile to draw in all of the tiles that should be solid on our map. Now we add a tile map collider 2D component to the collision layer. We want the collider to just use the tile map grid instead of trying to outline our tiles. We can change this by selecting the collision marker tile and then changing its collider type to grid. If you're having trouble finding this setting, make sure that you've selected the tile and not the texture. We also need to offset the Y by 0.125 to bring the collider into alignment with the map. We are now going to add a composite collider that will combine the colliders into larger, more efficient colliders that cover the same area. To make this work with the tile map collider, we need to check used by composite. When we check this, you'll see that the colliders all combine together into one. This step also automatically added a rigid body 2D to our collision layer. We can set its body type to static because the buildings will not be moving. We also need to add a collider to the character. We will use a Capsule Collider 2D for the character. We want to basically model the feet of our character when shaping the capsule. We'll zoom in on the character to get a better look. We'll now shape and position the Capsule Collider using the offset and the size. That looks like a pretty good match for the character's feet. We now want to see all this collision handling in action. We can start the game running and then duplicate the character to test the collision handling. The shortcut to duplicate is Command D on Mac and Control D on Windows. Alright, it looks like everybody's bumping into each other and bumping into the walls, so everything is working correctly. One of the nice things about separating out the collision into its own layer is that we can easily make a tile solid even if there's no building at that grid point. Let's use this technique to create a boundary around our map. Let's also outline the banks of the river. Alright, let's run the game again and fill the whole map with a bunch of characters. Now, not only are the building's walls stopping the characters, you can see they also bump up against the riverbanks and the invisible border around the edge of the map.
The next thing we want to do is add a script to our collision layer. The script will be named Collision Controller. What we're going to do with this script now is make it so that we have the option of hiding the collision marker tiles while playing the game. We will drag the script onto the collision layer to attach the component to the tile map. Now let's open up this script. You can also double click on the script in the component to open the editor. The first thing we need is a reference to the tile map renderer. This reference will allow us to turn off the rendering for the collision tile map. We need to import tile maps for this to work. We will define a public boolean variable called show collision. We'll make the variable public so that we can change it in the Unity interface. Let's also be sure to assign the tile map renderer reference in the start method. The last thing we need to do is simply assign the show collision boolean to the enabled variable in the tile map renderer. This means the collision marker tiles will only be visible when we check show collision in the Unity interface. So we'll go back to Unity and let the script reload so that the variable becomes visible. And now we'll run the game to see if it actually hides the collision markers during play. All right, we can no longer see the collision markers on the map when we are actually playing the game. This allows us to use them as a guide when we're building the map, but then we don't have them in the way when we're playing the game. This completes the introductory tutorials for the Moon Mist Hollow project. We will be expanding on this project in future series, but in the meantime, we have made all of the code for this project available in the repository which is linked in the description of these videos. And we would really like to see where all of you take the project as well.